would like to request Dr. Nisha Billa to grace the dais and shower the blessing to our young minds. Good afternoon to everybody here and to JCRC. Firstly, I'm lucky I have my glasses, <laughs> so I feel more comfortable. In addition to what you said, uh, not only is it a problem of abundance, I think it's a problem of age. <laughs> so, a big hello to all the students and the faculty of this wonderful institution. Uh, I have to say it's been a wonderful experience since the morning. Um, the vibes are very, very positive. Um, it's a great amount of learning that is happening here. And uh, I really enjoyed the morning that I spent here. And I really look forward to coming back. Uh, particularly, I think also being in Rajasthan, being in Jaipur, I think it's a homecoming of sorts for me as well. Families from Pilani and Rajasthan always holds a great place in my heart. It's been wonderful to be welcomed here. The hospitality has been just unmatched. So thank you so much for that. Um, to the Vice Chairperson Amit Agarwal, Vice Chairperson Amit Arpit Agarwal, Vice Chancellor Professor Victor Gambhir, Director Digital Strategies, Dhiman Tagarwal and Dean Jaipur School of Business, Professor Renu Parikh for inviting me here today. I must say your welcome and your introduction was, uh, uh, should I say, I was of course uh, humbly proud to read, to hear it when I was hearing it, but it was also very embarrassing, but thank you so much for that. I have to say big congratulations to Sumedha Soni, convener of the Ekigai. Um, I think what you're doing is absolutely fantastic. And to the Super 30 uh, who are on this path of self-exploration, which in itself is a huge step out of your comfort zone. There are not many people uh, I know in this age category who would want to embark on this path. So, uh, like you very rightly said, it's the journey that is very important. The destination, yes, but it is the journey that is going to really evolve you and going to make you the people that you are going to become. So congratulations on embarking on this journey. It's, uh, it's very, very heartening uh, for me to see that the university uh, is actually giving this so much importance. I think it's extremely important and we try to do that in schools as well that we are running. But for a university to do it, I think it's very, very, uh, very inspiring. So kudos to uh, you all for thinking about this and putting this forth. Also, what is wonderful to see is that the huge cohort of students that you have uh, and, you know, bringing up concepts like Ikigai to them is, is huge, like I just said. I think for the students also, this knowledge that you all will get, of course, the academic knowledge is very important, but this knowledge of and the life skills that you will learn along the way, I think will really positively impact uh, your emotional, mental and spiritual well-being. And I think you all are going to really be life ready with these skills in hand. So what really is Ikigai? I think we all talk about Ikigai. Uh, I think Iki means life as we all know and Gai means worth. So what does Ikigai really stand for? It stands for what gives purpose and meaning to one's life and for one's reason for being. I think we need four things in life and I think I really stand by that. Something that you love to do, which is a passion. Something that the world needs, which is a mission. Something that you're good at, which is a vocation. And then something that you, get, that you can get paid for, which is your profession. And where all these four intercept, I believe one finds your ikigai there. Where you have an amalgamation of all four. And then fortunate are those who find the ikigai in life because very often one just goes along in life. But when you're able to find this spot, sweet spot where all four converge is your ikigai. Each individual in this world is unique. Each of us have our own journeys. No two journeys can be the same. There is no real formula for finding oneself. So like what you are already doing, each journey of self-exploration has to be exclusive and customized and it has to take its own path and time. And that actually is exactly what happened to me. <clears throat> I think mine has been a very organic journey. It wasn't very set out and well planned. It's just, it's just evolved and it has grown as I have grown along. 
um, and my journey with really and my relationship with Ikigai has also evolved. Once I started my work in education and mental health, that's when I realized that that's what my Ikigai is, which is a making which is making a difference to people's life, and that is what gives me most satisfaction. And that's where, for me, all four intersect: the passion, the mission, the vocation, and the the profession. That's where that has what has merged for me. I think. Helping people and giving back is the crux of it, and making a positive impact in people's lives, even in the smallest of ways. It doesn't have to be very earth-shattering, but I think giving back, and when people come back and tell me that yes, it has helped them, that is what is heartening and motivating, and that's what we are doing at Empower, for example. And along with that, I think all of us will agree that when you get that back kind of feedback, it is extremely overwhelming and a very humbling experience. I think what is important to note as you all are on your journeys of self exploration exploration is that finding one's purpose in life there are two things one that it's going to take time to discover it it can take years it's not something that's going to be overnight so don't be disheartened if you you know if you're constantly feeling i don't know what my purpose in life is i don't know what i'm doing it's going to evolve continue doing what you're doing and trust me it will evolve it will it will grow on you it's it it's not going to be overnight uh it is going to take time so for example even steve jobs he was passionate about spiritual enlightenment western history or other things eastern dance but his passion for technology is what evolved over time and then that finally became his purpose and the other thing is which goes along with this is that your ikigai with evolve will evolve with time what you what you think is your purpose today which may be true may be different from your purpose that is going to evolve into it into the next 15 years but that is in so when you look back does it mean that you wasted the 15 years of your life or the x number of years no you haven't because uh, back then that is what your purpose in life was as you evolve as you change as a person your journey change uh, journey changes you as a person your ikigai also evolves so it will uh, it is something that is going to impact and keep changing your sense of purpose as well i saw this quote outside also and i think i really resonate with it it's by albert einstein and it says life is like riding a bicycle to keep your balance you have to keep moving so as you progress through various ups and downs of life the path of discovering and de- rediscovering yourself will also unfold some of these phases will be beautiful some of them as we all know will be marked by challenges there are several several questions that you may have and as you discover these wonderful facets of life you will realize what your purpose and your ikigai is along this journey when when you are when you are faced with questions the one thing that you must always believe in is yourself and just follow through with that there will be hurdles but it is this belief in yourself that is going to keep you on that path and that is what to keep you self empowered and give you joy as you move along your journey i think for me and i think for all of us what is important is that to know that the one thread that actually has seen me through the various challenges of life is the efforts at taking care of yourself for your for your body your mind and your soul which i think is very important your bms come i will come to body to the mind later but let me tell you about the soul first we all feel that spirituality and leading a spiritual way of life is something that we need to look at beyond retirement but i think that's a huge myth and what you all are doing very much is being on the path of spirituality already which i think is great there are very few people like i said in the past who really get on this path and many very few youngsters but having a spiritual way of life being bringing about a balance in everything that you do is what will really st- stand you in the test of time and developing this system into a lifestyle from a young age will be which will really help you get a balanced approach in life to become friends with all these different aspects and adventures of life you must always keep coming back to that self care keep looking after your your mind your body and your soul it's a very simple formula even if you spend 20 minutes of your day doing that i think you've got it set so and spend 20 minutes on your body which is your exercise 20 minutes on your mind and 20 minutes on your soul which is any kind of meditative practice that you have 20 20 20 
This brings me to mental health. As we all know that mental health and it's my belief that it is probably becoming more important than physical health. Physical health is something that we all do and we must continue doing but we have to lay focus on mental health as well because without good robust mental health our journey into self exploration finding our purpose just becomes that much more uh, enjoyable no one better than you students to know how difficult and how prevalent mental illness has become in fact what you were saying sumeda very much so post pandemic uh, the the challenges that you have faced i think was faced across and uh, i think pandemic that was a silver lining it really brought into focus the white elephant that was mental health that is sitting very much in all our rooms in all our houses in all our lives as we all know there are a lot of external factors that cause this of course there is a huge genetic disposition also but there are a lot of external factors as well uh, as we all know there are relationship issues a lot of peer pressure a lot of academic pressure a lot of pressure from parents um, low self esteem there are various factors that can lead to mental health issues so it's important to know what the red flags are and i'm so happy that we have inaugurated the empower cell now at the university and again kudos to the to the governing body over here to think that mental health need is so important so congratulations to that and having the empower cell here which will which will really look after your mental health needs as well therapists and counselors will treat it with utmost confidentiality and treat students with respect our empower cells in the other universities are also doing well and i'm sure the empower cell here is here to look after your mental health needs and will do very well as well i'm sure it will become a great asset to everybody on campus i would urge all students to take advantage of it and to help 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 you help us help us help you so that you can give have the right coping mechanisms in place to better your mental health and help find your true self and your ikigai always put your mental health first always be alive in the present and always be authentic to yourself thank you and cheers to a wonderful life ahead thank you